Hi YouTube and welcome back to my kitchen and another episode of Chow with Lao. Today, by popular request, I am teaching you how to cook tempura. Right guys, hope you're having a good week. Uh, this is by popular demand. I made this for my wife's birthday dish. Uh, the other night and stuck it on Facebook and I got a lot of people asking me how to make it. It's not strictly a Chinese food, but uh, it's more it's got more to do with Japanese cuisine, I suppose. Uh, but it's so delicious and so nice, why wouldn't I show you how to do it? So what you need for this recipe, for the crispy coating, the tempura batter, we are going to use some self-raising flour. I've got 150 grams of self-raising flour here. We're also going to use some baking powder. There's going to be about a teaspoon of baking powder goes in there. Uh, we're going to season that with some salt, pepper, and we're going to put some water in that to make to constitute our batter. Um, I never give kind of finite amounts of water because I do this by feel. You'll sh you'll see what I mean. I'll show you the consistency we're after. That'll give you a nice light crispy batter when we get there. You can actually tempura pretty much anything. Okay, but there are a few little guidelines that uh, that will help. Plus the fact today I'm going veggie. Okay, that's right, you heard me right. I am going veggie, don't faint, don't fall over. This is, this is a blip, okay? <laughs> but yeah, I thought, you know what? Let's make this at least semi-healthy. And to be fair, tempura veggies are absolutely amazing. Even somebody like me with a carnivore background uh, will, will, will testify to that. So, I've raided my cupboard and there's a, broad range of things you can use for this, but this is what I have that I think will work, okay? So we've got some broccoli, which I've chopped into little florets. About this size is about perfect for this, okay? I've got sweet potato, and even this little sweet potato will make quite a lot, uh, and it's also really delicious. It may not be the first thing that comes into mind uh, when you think of tempura, but it really is lovely. In fact, I've had it in restaurants and I thought it was carrot, but when you bite into it, you know it's with potato, it's really nice. We're gonna go sweet corn, and this is gonna be like a kind of sweet corn uh, fritter. I'm gonna clump it in, into the, into the batter and fry it, so you'll get a little kind of almost popcorn, tempura corn, if you know what I mean. Does that make any sense? But you, you know what I mean. I think that, that draws the visual imagery. And then I've got a pepper, which a red pepper, which I will slice into fine strips and that will tempura really nice. I've picked a red pepper because it's got, I, I love the colour against the, uh, against the tempura batter, plus it's got a bit of sweetness. The green, every, every pepper would work. So this is what I have in my fridge and my cupboards. Uh, other things that would be great would be asparagus. That's delicious. Uh, courgettes. Uh, finely, oh, well, thinly sliced courgettes or even the flour. I've, I've, I've had tempura uh, courgette flours before. Sounds really weird, but it's absolutely delicious. Um, if you want to go a slightly more meaty way, king prawns always work fantastic, and fish, um, strips of, I don't know, cod, things like that, uh, fantastic. But like I said before, we're going veggie today because I'm being extra good. Okay, so that's what we're doing today. Um, tempura needs a dip, okay? There are lots of different dips you can find on the internet as recipes. Uh, you can even buy it bottled, but I prefer to make my own. And I'm gonna go with this recipe, which has been suggested by my lovely wife, Yvonne. And the base for that is some light soy sauce, about a tablespoon of light soy sauce, a tablespoon of rice vinegar, and about a teaspoon of soft brown sugar. Okay, and we'll just mix it up very, very simple and makes a nice sort of sweet, savory, uh, sharp sauce, which cuts through the tempura coating really nicely. Okay, and finally, and last but not least, obviously we're gonna need some cooking oil. Any old cooking oil will do. Um, obviously avoiding things like sesame oil and olive oil, which are not cooking oils anyway. Uh, vegetable oil, corn oil, peanut oil, uh, rapeseed oil, all of those will work perfectly fine uh, because they have no, well, very little flavour in themselves and will go to the right temperatures. So, without further ado, get your woks ready. 
Right guys, we're going to slice the pepper up. So first of all, cut it in half. I always love this. As a photographer, I've always liked taking pictures of half peppers because the colours and the textures are, are amazing. Um, actually, weirdly enough, in black and white, you can bring out the textures even better. But I digress. I'm going into photography. We're talking about cooking today. <laughs> so we pull out the, uh, the core, if you like, along with the seeds because we're not going to eat them. And then for this, we're going to finely slice them. Obviously, the finer we slice them, the quicker they're going to cook when they're frying. Okay. One thing I need to mention is that we don't pre-cook the vegetables before we deep fry them in the tempura batter. Okay. Everything is raw before it goes in. Okay. Obviously, you do your standard wash and drain to make sure that they're nice and clean. So we're looking at strips of that kind of thickness. Okay, so it should still hold a bit of crunch when it's been fried, but it doesn't want to take too long to cook before the batter burns, before this is cooked inside, if you know what I mean. Right, the next step is to make our tempura batter. I've got 150 grams of self-raising flour here, to which I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of baking powder. That will help give us the light and crispy and crunchy texture that we're after. I'm going to season this with a good amount of salt and pepper. I'm not going to actually season the vegetables because it just won't stick on. And this is one of those simple recipes where we don't have to coat the vegetables in any flour or anything before we put it in the batter mix. They just go straight in. That's what the beauty of this recipe. So easy, so simple. Okay, I'm gonna give that a shake so it kind of starts to mix up. And now the magic bit is putting the right amount of water. Like I said, I'm not even measuring this. What I want is something that resembles a thick pancake mix. Okay, if you see my sweet and sour chicken bowl recipe, it's not as thick as that. It's kind of halfway between a pancake mix and that sweet and sour chicken bowl mix. Okay, I'll show you when we get there. So I'm just gonna put, then this is just plain water. So we start to incorporate it. That's going quite thick, so I'm gonna add more. And we'll just add a bit more until we get there. Yeah, the thing is not to over thin it. Of course, if you do end up putting too much water in it, you can add some more flour until you do get it right. But if you keep doing that, you're going to need a bigger bowl. See, that is turning into a batter, but that for me is a little bit too thick. Okay. I think we might be getting here now. Keep mixing it. Mix it, mix it, mix it, as someone says. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> the texture or the consistency is about right now. As you can see, it's quite a liquidy batter, but I've got lumps in it, so I'm just going through it to try to get rid of all the lumps. And this will help incorporate the salt and the pepper into the, uh, throughout the batter, nice and evenly, so that'll be good anyway. Okay, I think we're pretty much there now. Okay, so that is the consistency I'm looking for. And if, when you do make this for yourself, as you run your fingers through it, you can feel how light it is. It's almost like a foam, which is exactly what we want, because you imagine that when it sets as a batter, it's gonna be very light indeed. Happy days. Right, on to the next bit, the deep fry. Right guys, now we're going to the frying stage. I don't think I have to tell you, but I'm going to anyway. Be really careful, hot oil, always dangerous, so please, please take care when you're doing this kind of thing. 
Okay, right, so we've got the uh, oil in our, my, my little mini wok. I'm just doing the, the wooden chopstick test. And what we're looking for is a nice bubble fizz off the chopstick, which indicates that we're at about 180 degrees, which is perfect. Okay, so for frying this, this is gonna be pretty quick. So you've gotta be careful that we're not gonna overdo the batter, get it uh, burnt. There's nothing worse than a burnt batter. So just, just be on your guard. Okay, so what we're going to do is I've got the veggies in. I've put the sweet corn in. Yeah, I'm gonna do the sweet corn last because that's gonna probably clump up and it's a little bit harder to find in the batter. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna put in, or the first things, are the broccoli. Because they're quite thick stemmed, they probably take the longest to actually cook. So there we go. So coating, make sure we've got a thorough coating of the tempura batter. And in we go. I'm gonna follow that with the sweet potato because obviously being a kind of potato, a root vegetable, that is also gonna take a little while to cook. Okay, and finally, for this stage anyway, the pepper, because the pepper will be the fastest to cook. Theoretically, oops. <laughs> okay, right. So let me just uh, wash my hands. Okay, and because the oil is nice and hot, this will not take long at all. Can you see it? It's all coming together nicely. You'll find, <laughs> like I just have, that if they touch each other whilst, we're, whilst they're in the, uh, in the pan, that they might stick together, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Okay, now you can see how light the batter is. The batter is supposed to be like this. It isn't supposed to totally engulf your vegetables. You will see parts of your vegetables peeking through, and that is a sign of a classic tempura, this, which is why the, the batter is a bit thinner than you would for, a, like I said, a sweet and sour chicken ball. Um, and that's exactly right. Okay. Excellent. They're looking pretty good. Once they get to a golden brown, I'd say they're pretty done. We don't want to overdo it. We don't want to go into the kind of um, two brown stage. It needs to be nice and light. And because they're veggies, that's fine. Because we do want to retain that crunch and that crispness of the vegetables. We don't want to make it soggy, which is why, again, one of the reasons why we don't pre-cook the vegetables. Um, yeah, one of, one, one of your instincts may be to kind of blanch the, the, the uh, broccoli before you put it in. No, we don't do that because it'll just be too mushy. Okay, they're coming out now. Excellent. I'm gonna take some of the, uh, the bits out so that we can have a cleaner oil for the next stage. And now for the sweet corn, because this is gonna be, because obviously it kind of fills the batter, uh, we do this last. Okay, I'm gonna use, for safety reasons, <laughs> A, a utensil to put these in, and this should keep them hopefully clumped together. We'll shake it in. Yeah. We're going to get some loose ones as well, but that's fine. But we'll get some fairly random little clumps, which I think will work really well. So, like I said, they're like um, sweet corn fritters which are nice, and they literally will only take about a minute to cook. As soon as the batter has kind of set, we're done. Yeah, please be careful with this bit as well, because they do tend to spit a lot, because obviously sweet corn's got a lot of um, water in them. What do we call this then? Is this? Is this the legendary, the mythical popcorn popcorn? <laughs> <laughs> a 
Okay, that I believe is about done. Pretty much, hold on, there's just a little bit of pale, pale batter here. Let's get, uh, let's get that set. Wonderful, I think that's about ready. It's ready to come out. Let's pop it onto the uh, tissue to drain. Beautiful, oh, wow. That's amazing. this off for now. As you can see, a little goes a long way. I've got probably less than a, a small tin of sweet corn here. And when I say small, I mean those little diddy tins that you get. And it's made that much, which is pretty good. Okay. Right, one stage left, the dipping sauce. So on to the final part, the dipping sauce. So I've got one teaspoon of soft brown sugar. I'm gonna to add to that a tablespoon of rice vinegar. And then, A, a tablespoon, even, of light soy sauce. Okay, of course you can scale this up or down depending on how many people you are feeding. Give it a good stir so that the sugar is all dissolved. And this should complement our tempura beautifully. Now the only dilemma left is what to try first. Hmm, I'm gonna go for a pepper. So we just dip it like this. Excuse me, I'm having a moment. <laughs> That's amazing. The batter is so light, so crisp. The pepper in size is, is just still firm, still got a bite to it, but it's gone even sweeter because of the heat. Right. <clears throat> popcorn, popcorn. That's just amazing. <clears throat> It's so nice. Words fail me. I'm trying to describe it for you, but I'm not doing my job here. Because it is just so nice. The corn kind of pops in your mouth. And it really goes nicely with that crispiness. And the batter, like I said, is just so light. That's what you want. It's not a heavy, um, cloying batter. It's just lighter than air. And the pièce de résistance. Sweet potato. You know what, I never knew I was a fan of sweet potato, but when you cook it like this, you can't not be. The bonus is sweet potato is really good for you too. Amazing. The texture is really great because sweet potato when it's cooked is nice and soft. And because it was so thin, you kind of half expect to bite in like, like a texture of a raw carrot, but it's not because the heat is just enough to soften it on the inside which is why it has to be cut thin. And the kind of fibrousy texture that sweet potatoes have and the sweetness is just so, so nice. So if you're, sort of, if you're not a fan of sweet potato, this will definitely convert you. It's fantastic. And another superfood, the broccoli. Amazing. Oh my God. I like broccoli anyway. 
No, this is just nice and sweet. The softness of the little bits at the end contrasts with the firm sort of uh, firmness of the stem itself or the crisp on the outside. Well, this is my recipe. I'm speechless. <laughs> This is just so nice. It's one of those great recipes. You can make it, you've got your friends around for watching a movie or you're having a date night and you just snack on this. It's just superb. And you can also use it as part of a main course. Maybe you're making an udon noodle broth. You just pile this on top. Superb. There's so many different uses for it. Um, and on its own, it's just fantastic as a starter even, but you could even fill your boots with it as a main course. It is just amazing. I think this is one of my favorite recipes so far. Um, so yeah, whoever asked me to do that, to do this recipe, thank you. <laughs> cool. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I have enjoyed making it. it it's one of my favorites so far, definitely. So if you haven't already, please subscribe. Please hit that subscribe button. And if you have subscribed, hit the notification bell. That will alert you to every video I put out uh, so you won't miss anything. And also please do comment if there are any recipes you want me to do. Just put them in the comments below and I'll see if I can do them. I've got a list of actually a backlog of, of requests that I'm working through at the moment. So uh, yeah, please add to the list. I, I aim to keep doing this for as long as I can. I'm really enjoying it, so it's all good. So thank you for watching and I hopefully will see you in the next video. Take care, bye-bye.